Welcome to Cello Tuesday. I'm Diane Chaplin, and as you could see from the title page, which I finally figured out how to do after a year and a half of live streams, um, as you can see from the title page, this program is called Solima, and it features the music of Giovanni Solima, who is an Italian cellist and composer. He was born in Palermo, Sicily, and he studied both cello and composition. His dad was a composer, so he studied some composition with him. And he writes a lot, a lot of music, especially for cello, and he has an international career as a cellist. A lot of the music that he writes is a merging of different stylistic ideas. For instance, he pulls a lot of uh, repertoire from Baroque, Renaissance, classical time periods, but he infuses that repertoire with heavy metal, with jazz, with rock, and with a lot of asymmetrical rhythms such as are found in folk music of the Mediterranean and in Eastern Europe. So all the pieces that we're going to play today are going to have some sort of asymmetrical rhythm in them. Um, and I will mention that Heather Blackburn will be joining me uh, near the end of the concert for a couple of pieces of Salima. Um, so uh, the one of, one of the other things that he does is he kind of creates instruments or has people build instruments for him. For instance, someone built him an ice cello, which he played in an igloo theater. Um, and someone also built him a, a tenor violin that was based on paintings, Renaissance paintings of musicians, in particular paintings of Caravaggio. And we've all seen, many of us have seen these kinds of paintings that depict life with musicians there. And one of the things you also notice in some of these paintings are scrolls of music, of actually music notated. And so in addition to having this tenor violin built, Solima also took some of the fragments of the music from the Renaissance painting, figured out what those notes were, and put it into the first piece that I'm going to play. This piece is based on a Caravaggio painting called Amor Vincent Omnia, which means love conquers all, and the piece is called Amor Vincent Omnia. This is part of a larger work that was called Daydream, that was part of a ballet for the Ballet Theatre of Torino that Salima wrote. He wrote the music for this ballet in 2007, and this piece comes from that particular project. Uh, all of the pieces of Solima have some amount of repetitive rhythms in them. He is partly known as a minimalist composer, and the definition of minimalism would be when we have small bits of music that repeat a lot of times. And Solima uses sometimes big chunks of music that repeat, but it's you pretty much never hear anything once with Solima. Everything is in a repeating pattern of some sort. So that's something that you'll definitely notice through the whole program. Uh, also, each piece has some kind of quirk, gimmick, special thing that goes on in it. And in this one, in Amor Vincent Omnia, I'm going to be using a delay pedal. So I have a bunch of electronics set up over here. Um, the delay pedal makes an echo-like sound. That's very cool, and you will definitely notice it when it happens. Also, one of the things, because I have all these directions about how to deal with the electronics, one of the things that I wrote on my music was intensity straight up. And I think that that's a great just kind of subtitle for this program. Intensity straight up. This is Amor Vincent Omnia by Giovanni Solima. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Solima. The next piece I'm going to play, let me check my settings. The next piece I'm going to play is maybe his most mo well-known piece amongst cellists in any case. It's called Lamentatio. It's from the year 2000 uh, and it has a couple of really interesting things in it. Uh, one of the things is just the kind of sounds he asks the cello to do. I mean, he really is uh, interested in pushing the envelope of what you can ask a cello to do. How many new sounds can you create? So here he actually asks the cellist to play with a distorted sound, like as loud and kind of dis ugly sort of sound, um, and also to just really play roughly and crudely into the instrument. And the other thing that you're going to notice right up at the beginning is there's some singing here. And I also I just want to mention, he asks for the singing to be nasal and without vibrato. In other words, again, not a really pleasant kind of singing sound. Just want to tell you that in case you think that's my normal singing voice. I'm trying to do what it says in the music. Um, okay, this is Lamentatio by Giovanni Solima. <laughs> Thank you. 
by Giovanni Salima. My heart's racing now. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot of hitting in that piece, and uh, I'm going to continue that trend with the next, uh, the next piece, but this time I'm going to use a drumstick. Um, I'm also going to take a, a glass, a drink of water, if you don't mind. <clears throat> the next piece is called Terra Aqua. It was written in 2001. And you'll notice it's going to have no bow in it. It's all about the drumstick. And um, the, uh, this is one of the ones that has lots and lots and lots of repetition. So I think this may be the most minimalist piece on this program. Lots of short bits that uh, repeat over and over in a sort of a mesmerizing, it just creates this kind of ongoing fabric of music. And it's going to use the delay pedal, which I will adjust my settings. Great. <clears throat> okay, uh, this is Terra Aqua by Giovanni Salima. Thank you. 
sort of a weird sound <laughs> that the, del the delay pedal made. That was Terra Aqua by Giovanni Solima. Okay, next, I'm, I'm just looking at a couple of notes, uh, uh, comments over there. Hi folks, thank you, for, thank you for writing comments. I had noticed that there were no comments before and I thought, I, it just actually during the last piece I was thinking, I hope this is going out on the live stream. I'll just broadcast it later if it's not. It's okay, no problem, but I'm glad that people are out there listening. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, okay, so the next piece, the little quirk in the next piece is, my cello is untuned. This is called scordatura, which literally means like untuning your cello or retuning your cello. And so what I'm doing is I'm tuning my lowest string, which is usually D, and tuning it down to an A, which makes a very cool sound. And in fact, the next, this is the last one of the solo pieces that I'm going to play, and then Heather's going to come join me. And from here on out, we're all about untuned cellos, actually. You would think that simply changing the pitch on one string would be easy, but you would be wrong, because the whole cello goes out of tune when we change one string. Doesn't this sound like a bass? It's great. I love feeling like a bass. One more moment. of my solo pieces is called Fandango. So a Fandango is a Spanish dance with castanets. And this is a Fandango that is not just based on, but basically stolen from. A Fandango that Baccarini, Luigi Baccarini, another Italian cellist composer, he wrote this uh, during the classical period. It was originally written for string quintet. When you play it with a string quintet, you get to play the castanet part, which is really fun. Uh, which is a quintet that has two cellos in it, and it basically says castanets in the part, and you make up a castanet part. Um, but then Baccarini did an arrangement for strings with guitar, and that's actually the version that most people play nowadays, and the guitar is able to do kind of brr, brr sort of chords. On the cello, the way that those, those are going to be executed is with a technique we call ricochet, where I throw my bow and it makes this castanet kind of sound. So you'll definitely hear that the whole way through the piece. And there's some other little tricks that I have up my sleeve, and I'm not going to tell you what they are because you'll see them. This is the Fandango by Giovanni Solima.
So we're going to have a very brief one, two minute intermission here. Uh, I'm going to put up the intermission screen, which is beautiful artwork uh, of, that Heather Blackburn, Blackburn drew for this. This is the Arboreto Salvatico, which will be the last piece on the program. And I'll see you in a minute or two.
Hi, we're back. And here's Heather. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay, so the next piece uh, was programmed in exactly this order because I get to keep my low A string, and Heather's cello is also tuned in that same way with this low bass-like sound. Um, so one of the things that Salima also has done is he's written a lot of music for movies, m most, uh, most of them Italian movies. Uh, and this next piece that we're going to play is kind of movie music. It's, it's, I, I, I haven't seen this movie. It's called Palermo Shooting. If I were really doing good research, I would have gone and looked it up, but I did not go look at it. Uh, it's from 2008, and he calls this piece for two cellos The Shooting, uh, and it's kind of a sort of poignant melody, I think, that's maybe background music from the movie. So this is The Shooting by Giovanni Salima. <laughs> Giovanni Solima. Okay, so now 
Heather's going to return, retune. We're going to do this on camera instead of going to the intermission screen again. And I'm going to cheat. And instead of retuning this cello, I'm going to change cellos. And so the, the reason that I am uh, changing cellos is it's, it's, it's hard on the instrument to, to re ah! to retune all the time um, and in the practicing of these pieces that is just too much back and forth. So I'm using my second cello for this. This tuning, our, our low A string has come back up to C, but now our A string and our D strings, both of us, are going down to G and C. So the cellos will be tuned G, C, G, C. Go from the bottom, C, G, C, G. So we've got two fifths of G's and C's. Again, making a, a, a little bit of a different tone color on the instrument. Uh, and this is for uh, the final piece on the program, which is called Arboreto Salvatico. So Arboreto is an uh, arboretum, a place where we cultivate trees, take care of them, uh, study them. And Salvatico is sort of a funny word that means, sounds like, Sa savage or wild, but also has this sa salvation word at the beginning of it. So it's sort of an indicator about this is a piece about salvation, and you can interpret it as the trees in the forest are our salvation, if you'd like. That's how, how I'm looking at it. Um, this piece is in three movements, which are based on poetry by Mario Rigoni Stern, who was a uh, Italian poet. Uh, he died in 2008, which is the same year that the piece was written, so I think that that's not a coincidence. Uh, and so the, the three trees that Solima chose, because oh, the Arboreto Salvatico is a set of poems about trees, lots of them, by, by Stern, and uh, so, Solima chose three trees, the pine, the sequoia, and the yew. And they're all three trees that are firs or, or evergreens of some sort, so they don't have you know, long, sh shiny leaves particularly, they prick, prick, kind of prickly kinds of, of leaves. Um, and so the, I think the music a little bit relates to that. The U, the English U, is the third movement, and that music is very sort of aggressive and, and prickly, and there's a certain amount of hitting of the cellos that goes on during that one. Um, and the second movement, the second movement, the sequoia, is has, has some real grandeur, and I think you can also hear the wind rustling very, very high up because sequoias, of course, are very, very tall. Wind in the in the leaves up tall, um, in the in the needles. Uh, and the first movement is the pine, and in particular, this movement not just references the poetry of Stern, but includes the poem. So there's a, a direction here that I am supposed to sing or chant or speak with approximate notes, kind of whatever notes I want, the poem, so that you'll definitely hear that happening. Um, but I want to read you the translation of the poem first. According to the Greeks, the silver pine was the symbol of virginity. And because of this, it was dedicated to Diana, Diana, which is my Italian name, and also to Pan, in memory of a girl that was beloved and pursued by him. Uh, that Borea, who is the north wind, also in Italian known as Aquilone, that Borea pushed into the mountains and, and made fall uh, from a rock. And so you'll hear that at the beginning, and then there's this beautiful melody, and then the next line happens. Uh, the um, compassionate earth transformed her into a pine, and whenever Pan feels the wind, the air, the breath of Borea, he can never stop crying. And then you'll hear the beautiful melody again, and then at the very end of this movement, uh, the last line is the um, drops of sap that the pine leaks out are the tears of the beloved girl. Oops, let me check on where you end up.
just want our C's to be the same. This one. movement piece Arboreto Salvatico by Giovanni Solina. dedicato a Diana, ma anche a Pan, in memoria di una fanciulla da lui amata e insidiata, che vorrei spinse sulle montagne e fece precipitare
specie di raggio che pinge me sono le lacrime della fanciulla amata
by Giovanni Salima. That is the end of the concert. Many thanks to Heather Blackburn for coming and playing so that I wasn't all by myself like I usually am. Like I'll be for the next several live streams. Um, so next month is July and my live stream's on July 5th. So it's the day after our Independence Day celebration and it is called Americana, a celebration of independence. And I'm super excited because it's going to feature a world premiere of a piece that was written for me by the wonderful composer Judith Markovich that is called Oh, I don't want to misrepresent it. Voices, or oh, I can't remember the name. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> You'll look for it. You'll see it. Um, and it will also have really cute and clever uh, American tunes that you will recognize. I think it's going to be really fun. Uh, and after that, I'm going to be in Italy, and the next program will be all Italian music from Italy, called In Italia. So I hope I see you uh, in early July. Uh, I'm going to look at a few of the comments before I go away. Hi, everybody. Hi, Erin. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Julian. Hi, Shelly. Jack. Julian and Justin. Oh, hi, Justin. Thanks. <laughs> I think um, Ari. Justin again. Erin again. Uh, did I get everybody? Ronnie. Hi, Ronnie. Kimberly. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'm going to turn this thing off now. Oh, here, I'll show you Heather's art one more time, and then we'll go away. Bye.